Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be taking you on a walkthrough uh, for a character that I built called Sasha in Character Creator. Um, so I'm starting out with the f uh, initial CC3 Plus base mesh, um, and uh, the really cool new features of this base mesh are that uh, they've adjusted the UVs so that you can now utilize UDEM workflow, and they've updated the geometry as well for this. They've also included like eye occlusion mesh, um, lots of really, really cool new features to, uh, to the CC Plus mesh. So uh, now I'm just going in and I'm dragging and dropping my reference image in the background. Um, I'm just going to boost up the self-illumination and opacity, uh, throw this into wireframe, and then line up my image and get going with setting the main proportions to my character. So uh, transform values for moving things are the same uh, uh, controls as, as Maya and everything, so W-E-R. And so this you can just double, like you can cl click and drag over the uh, body part you want to uh, change the proportions of. Um, and you can also use the modify palette and drag the sliders. I choose to uh, mainly use the sliders only on the face um, and then during the body exploration of proportions I usually uh, navigate with the dragging and pulling of the body parts and I feel like if you can't get anything as like for these stylist characters I'm trying to get something really dramatic and lanky looking because it's really selling uh, her proportions um, and if you're not getting an extreme enough value, you can always bake it down in the modify uh, palette and then reuse that same uh, slider. So I'm just trying to get the proportions correct, which is always the hardest part, but um, it's best to nail down the proportions before you go see this into ZBrush. Because um, then you have minimal work in terms of uh, lining up the rig and fixing and adjusting bones after the fact. The idea is hopefully you don't have any to fix. <laughs> so the better you can adjust these proportions in uh, in CC3, then uh, the better off you are with your, with your posing and, and rig afterwards. So now I'm just going to work on the face. Uh, I feel like I'm somewhat happy with the body. I might go back to it later. So I'm dragging in my reference image for the face. Uh, for this, I don't have exact front-on view, so I'm probably just going to move it to the side and uh, line it up as best as I can in terms of scale and pop it to the side so I can view the features themselves. So here I'm just going to go through like my actual sliders, and you can see that they've added like so many more uh, face morphs and just morphs in general to all of the sections, so you can have different types of bodies, um, different heads. You can even have like a gorilla head, which is really cool. Um, but I mean, I won't use any of those. <laughs> so there's tons and tons and tons of morphs for changing your character's facial features, which is really cool. Um, so it keeps a lot of, like basically you're in ZBrush really minimally to address any features you need. Maybe basically for um, any seriously stylized characters or you know anything of particular personality is something you should adjust in ZBrush but for the most part I found for this specific character I could get probably about 95 percent of her proportions done and facial features and everything uh, finished inside of character creator which is really cool So I'm trying to hit this like um, the the big eye feature that we have. The nose I'm probably going to sculpt inside of ZBrush because um, it has a lot of like angles to it, which I kind of want to get. Um, the lips I might also polish up and reshape a little in ZBrush. For now, the eyes are coming along. I'm trying to get this like almond swoop that she has going on, and it's kind of dramatic. I don't mind the ears too much because you don't really see them, so I'm just doing my best to guess what those will look like. Something that still feels a bit normal. 
she kind of feels more like a, an Alita character with like you know these these big eyes that draw your attention. I don't want to make her look too alien, so trying to bring it back to a little bit of a normal place. Just kind of go through all these sliders and see what is useful for me, what's not. Um, for the eyelashes, I ended up just using uh, a content library eyelash, which was really useful. So I found some eyelashes that felt like uh, the ones in my reference and adjusted the eyelash features as well. Right, so that feels okay. This stage is a lot about tweaking. You can see I can even get like that flat stylized nose a little bit in here, but in terms of making it exactly the one we need, um, ZBrush will take us the rest of the way. The only thing I really wanted to make sure was that the eyes were exactly where, where I needed them to be and they were the right scale because you don't want to adjust the eyes in ZBrush. You only want to like really, like you can adjust the eye shape maybe, but not the eye scale or size or anything like that. So trying to get the eyes the right size uh, just off the bat will be your best bet. You can see like there's strong legs, fat legs, toned legs. These are really cool features that are now in here, which weren't in here uh, a long time ago. And I love all of this like customization. It's really makes it easy to just pop out a brand new character in like, uh, you know, three hours, maybe even like an hour. You've got someone brand new starting with a regular pace mesh which is exactly what's so cool about Character Creator. And I love that um, in the CC Plus base, uh, now it's an A pose, so when you see, uh, when you go see this into ZBrush, now you can go see A pose. So when you're sculpting, you won't uh, mess up the, uh, the chest muscles, um, especially like in the arm area. The armpits usually got all messed up because uh, it would come out in T-pose, which was not super useful for us uh, as sculptors. So this is really awesome now that we can export at A-pose or T-pose and we can sculpt both to fix things we need. Oh, and here I'm just adjusting the uh, nail length and shape, which which is awesome. We don't even have to leave. You have a lot of natural nails, stiletto nails, ballerina nails, so many different shapes of nails. So you can get anything you want. Um, in the content library, there's nail polish, um, depending on the packs you have. But um, these are really useful for quickly establishing your nail length and you don't have to touch that inside of uh, ZBrush either, unless you've got something super custom. I think the hard part here with this character is trying to make her arms look skinny like the photos, but not too skinny that they feel abnormal and like long, trying to avoid that. Right, so here I'm just going to uh, close the mouth and uh, check the blink because moving the eyes uh, corrects, uh, changes your blink. So if you just correct the blink before you move on with Gozi, uh, this is a good, a good step to take so that your blink will work, which is a cool feature as well that um, as you make the eyes bigger or smaller, you can auto-correct the blink without having to do anything, really. Just click the button. <laughs> so one other thing is when you when you mess with the eye shapes and stuff, um, the thing that you need to fix is the tear line and the eye occlusion as well. These are new features of the new CC Plus base. Um, and uh, so you just have to move these around to line them up with the tear line as best as possible. Uh, the eye occlusion helps a lot to make uh, your characters look a lot more real. So you can see on the left side, 
uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a crash from the eyeball and also uh, the eye occlusion doesn't go far enough over so I'm just trying to to fix this but this is because my eyes are kind of an extreme size for this specific character So just going through and fixing the other eye, looks good. Alright, so now I'm going to go Z this to ZBrush. It's really simple, you just click the go Z button at the top. Um, and I'm not going to take the material groups, and I'm just going to select to send it all in A pose. So it's just going to load everything inside of ZBrush. So now I can begin uh, sculpting and adjusting anything I wanted, like the things, the features on the face is mostly what I cared about. The body proportions I've already adjusted to probably the maximum I'll need to. Maybe later once I'm building the costume I'll notice some things I might need to change, but again, I can change those easily in Character Creator, it's probably not a lot of sculpting needed. Um, if you're making an individual face, someone very particular, you can sculpt a lot of details in here. Um, I wanted to take a lot of use out of the normal map that was already created for the character because this was a stylized character so I figured I would paint a lot of more of the the details that uh, were getting in the face so I kind of changed some of the um, the bigger primary shapes of the face instead of sculpting into a lot of detail but this phase is your phase to uh, sculpt in as much detail as you want and then you can bake this out of here as a normal map to add inside of uh, Substance Painter and paint with that. For this character in particular, there was no need. I got all the information from Character Creator, which helped to speed up the process like so much faster. So here I'm just sculpting some of those stylized uh, features to the nose that are in my concept. Adjusting a little bit of the shape because it felt a bit strange. Sculpt a little more of an ear shape that I like better, just for a stylized ear. Just something a little cuter, a little button, button ear. So this is where I'm going to adjust the, the lips a little, polish out the shape, make it feel a little more like the concept. Wasn't really happy with, like the shape felt right, but there was some of the polished features of the lips. I, there were things that weren't pronounced in my character creator. Like I feel like it takes small adjustments just to make this feel more like my character in the concept. a little bit with the arms, but I'm trying not to adjust too much of this because uh, the bones are there and I don't want to mess with them too much. Just making some volume changes to the hand. Again, it's mostly just details. I don't want to adjust any positions in my model. I left that all to Character Creator, so establishing all your positions first is the best thing to do. So now that I want, I'm finished, I'm going to go Z all of this back. So I'm going to just make sure everything's visible, click uh, all at the top of the tools there. And this will go Z everything back into Character Creator. And you can just update all, uh, all the mesh. You can switch it to just update mesh or just update mesh and texture depending on uh, what you've changed inside of ZBrush. So now you can see I have my new sculpted mesh in here. It's hard to tell with the default textures on here still, but rest assured they are there. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the final stage for basically setting up my character head and body and 
Um, you can see that the poses are still working well. Um, then the next stage I'll move on to is making some clothes.